Welcome to Between the Posts. My name is Tony Neal and joining me is the great man Tommy Javor. Welcome, Tommy. It's great to be back, Tony. Must be that time of year, bringing in the big guns. And uh, have we got some new sponsors or no? no? no. Where are we? We're at Partner and PAC for a very special edition of Between the Post. Um, of course, their sponsors are behind us on their wall. We, we appreciate them having. It's a special time for PAC. People might have been, oh, PAC, they got done on the weekend. Don't worry about PAC. All five teams still alive, Tony. Five. Sensational. Mm. Do you know, Tommy, I arrived here tonight, folks. Football was in a great place. We had a, a great spectacle across all divisions in the Adelaide Football League this week. Um, but I arrived here tonight and there were two young ladies, no no men out there, but two young ladies just having a kick around, practicing yes. their skills. Well, you might have something on Did you Did you notice there. what they were wearing, Tony? There was a touch they, of blue in there. They were wearing Glenunga training guernseys. Now, oh. Nathan Grimer's daughter's only four years old, so it wasn't Grimer's kids. But who knows? Are, are Glenunga that crafty? Are they sending the spies out? Oh. Um, I found it quite amusing. Um, but no, good luck to the oh. girls having a kick. There's a lot, a lot of theory, mate. Yeah. So what else is coming up tonight? Of course, we look at uh, some of the teams in the divisions have already made it through the grand final. They're going to go up a division with promotion happening. And we look at the preliminaries. Who else is going to be fighting out for that second spot in the next division up? Yeah. That's a huge change, isn't it? Again, congratulations to all those teams that are now officially elevated. Mm. A very exciting time for your club, but there's still work to do. The other thing, mate, we're going to take a deep, 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 deep yeah. dive. Like Eddie yes. Murphy in 48 hours. I'm going to eat, sleep. I ain't, no, ain't going to do that. I'm going to go <laughs> real deep. We're doing the deep dive dartfish analytics. It's really good stuff, too. Mm. Uh, and, of course, some interviews, Tommy. You've got a couple of interviews with uh, PAC, the goals and marks, and... Much, much more. Oh, okay, much, much more. I thought there was something else. Goals, buzz, there's some handles in there, Tony. Um, we didn't say who. I, mate, I've managed to get the percolator in one of the interviews. I'm pretty That's excited. Crazy. The perk. All right, stay tuned, folks. A massive show coming up for you from here at PAC OC. And welcome to the Weekly Wrap with Tommy Javor. Obviously, I'm between the posts. And clearly, I'm on location at a club that won the 2016 and 2021 Premiership. It is, of course, PAC. You see all the great PAC sponsors who support the club behind me. Um, and you'll see you later on, or you might have already watched already, depending on the show order, some interviews with some players. Really looking forward to that. And uh, thanks again to PAC uh, President Jim Parkinson and all of PAC for allowing us to come into the club and have a good look at training and share it with you, the viewers. Um, again, the, the coverage is second to none in, in the way that the, all the clubs embrace us and help us bring the action to you. Let's have a look at last week's games as we move into ultimately the penultimate round this week. But the stream team, a little change of pace. We didn't originally, weren't planning to go on this game, but we ended up at Web Oval to watch Glenunga 7951 beat PAC 6743, an eight point win to the Rams. The player in focus, who I thought was best on ground, I can say that now because there's no roll the dice votes, was uh, number nine, the tip rat, Bowie Schwartz. Um, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, the Boffins listed him as 17 disposals. I thought he had a few more than that, but they were all very, very effective. Three clearances, four tackles, a smother, and a third quarter goal that was absolutely crucial. The tip rat was in everything. And he was the one player, Adam Jeffries talked about space in the phone booth. He was the one person that was able to duck, weave, dodge, and make his way through traffic like a few others on the day. A great game by Tippy. Um, goal scoring, obviously, was only 13 goals scored between the two teams. The only multiple goal scorers were Mike Wonky. He had a brace both early as well, so he set the tone really early, helped Glenunga get an early lead, and Jack Trengrove for PAC kicked a couple. Let's go into the Dartfish team stats, because um, it makes interesting reading. It, it was a very close game, so there's not a lot of discrepancy. Glenunga often have less disposals than their opposition, and that was the case again. PAC with the 20 more disposals, but again, the correlation, they still had 12 more inside 50s. Taking the long ball, taking the grass, owning the territory. They do that very well. Um, they took 16 less marks, but the one area they did win the game, I felt, was in the clearances. And that statistically came up in a team sense. You could see that by the fact they had 12 more clearances. A couple of statistical anomalies, I think, from the Boffins. Um, I'm not sure about the lopsided tackle count I've seen online. I didn't go back and count it myself, but I'm, I'm not even going to report that one. I, I reckon that one might be a touch off. Um, let's have a look at the award winners being a stream team game. We've got Archie's coming out of our Archie house. I don't know. Uh, I wish I'd have really uh, 
had a long... Jimmy, the cameraman, just he's just giving me that's my worst for the year. Sorry, Jim. I've let you down. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. But the first one, the Archies Award winner. I've just thonged to the TJ Award, Nick Egar in defence. He was outstanding. And at one point, laying on his back. They say he's the sexiest man at Galunga. Well, he does his best work on his back. Laying down, he's hit a scissor kick. And yes, Tony, and laced out a target. Laced out a target in the hands to allow them to repel um, an inside 50. He was outstanding all day. And again, Nathan Grimer thrives. He, he absolutely promotes how important it is to play your role. Well, Nick Egar plays his role as well as anyone. The Mosley voucher best team player was Alex Harron, um, the captain in the second quarter. Well, I jokingly said he looks like he's dead. Um, got banged up real bad, was escorted from the field, and with the courage of a thousand soldiers, as the captain and leader is, he made his way back and ended up having something like about 20 possessions. He's outstanding. His ability to get hand to um, hand to foot so quickly he never gets caught um, again a clearance clearance beast you'd say and a great leader the Neo North mouth guard player of the day was the snip Sammy Parsons a 50 metre goal off one step again the game was always on the line it was always in the balance Glenn seemed to have a lot of control but his third quarter I think it was the third quarter 50 metre goal was absolutely crucial to helping the Rams get the chocolates and as we mentioned um, the BOG he got um he got a dartfish beanie and, of course, some Archie thongs was Bowie Schwartz. Having a look at the best players, um, again, I don't always get sucked into what it says on the internet. I was at this game, so I can quite confidently say um, most of these are, are spot on. PAC, Cuz, uh, Chris Carr was outstanding. He really was. I felt like he was um, just about the best defender on the ground. He had 24 touches and 10 marks. Not easy to take 10 marks from Glenunga. A lot of them were contested. Third man up, timed his jump really well. An outstanding game. Uh, Jack Trengrove, 23 touches, two goals, nine tackles. You couldn't argue with that. That was His, his contribution was outstanding. Um, Slee, tough in and under, 14 touches, seven tackles. Brazel tried his hardest, and Andrew Bradley in the mix as well. For Glenunga, I, I gave Tippy best. Phil and um, Adam Jeffries agreed with me. Um, Abe Davis, who obviously recent Keith Sims medalist, creeps up on you. He still had um, 26 touches, four clearances, plenty of marks. He was he was once again very good. Started a lot slower this game, but ended up getting um, putting together a very good game. They also listed, as I mentioned before, Nick Egar and the best players. As there is a mosquito around me. I'm not having a seizure here. Um, Bo Schwartz. Um, I thought Nick Wunke was the best big man on the ground, and that was a really important part. A few, His third quarter, again, the premiership quarter was outstanding. Some clearances, some real grunt in the midfield. Involved his six or seven free kicks, most of them going his way. He had a great game. And Sammy Parsons, 21 touches, six marks, four clearances. You certainly couldn't answer with that. Whilst Karen was the best defender for PAC, that man Sam Wunke, he, is, he was outmarked once for the day, and you don't see him get outmarked more than once. He spoiled the ball. He spoiled the ball with vigour. He often turned defence into attack by the way just he attacked the ball and spoiled the ball. He, I think, has been probably the best key defender in the Division 1 comp this year from what I've seen. So Glenunga, um, final comments about the game. Glenunga through to their first, I think it's 1978, 45 years since they were through to a Division 1 grand final. Um, huge for the club, huge for where the clubs come from. Of course, um, winless in Division 2 um, as recently as 2020 to now be in a grand final in Division 1. It's an outstanding effort. Their B grade also go through to a prelim this week at Richmond Oval. So well done to the Glenunga Football Club. They should be extremely proud of their efforts and they didn't really put a foot wrong. They worked their asses off on the weekend and they ground out a win. Um, in the game itself, a couple of other things. Kurt Tozer um, received a red card, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, we are recording on the Tuesday night, so I'm, I'm not clear whether he's whether it goes to report or if he gets game. So that will be an interesting one. Um, the admission of Jaden Davis, hindsight's twenty twenty. I wouldn't have admitted Jaden Davis. If you look at the money ball effect, he averaged three goals a game. I think his goals and his goal contribution might have been really valuable. I'd be incredibly surprised if he doesn't come back in on the bigger expenses of Richmond. If Jaden Davis could bob up for a couple, he's worth his weight in gold. So I think you'll see the return of Jaden Davis this week. He took it like a man, so well done to Jaden. Of course, he's the leading goal kicker in Division 1. Um, they couldn't squeeze all the points in. But what I will say is PAC are off to a prelim in an attempt to make another grand final. You can look here, you can see... I think you can, can they see that on the shot, Jimmy? Can they see the flags? Good. 2016 Premiers, 2021 Premiers, 2019 they made the grand final when defeated by PNU. 2020 is a COVID year. 
No disrespect to Goodwood, but I don't put that quite on the same level as a, a full season. In 2021, they defeated Paynham. In 2022, they were defeated by Port. They are always there at the end of the year. Don't want to, I don't want to um, get ahead of myself about the preview of the game coming up, but they are one win away from another grand final. Certainly she wouldn't hang their hems in shame. An eight-point loss to Glenunga at home shows they are right in the mix. A really good game of football, an exciting game of football to watch, despite the fact it was dour and tough at all times. Now, our other game I wasn't at, but I did go back and watch some of the footage because, um, well, it's Division One football this time of year. It's just exciting. Sacred Heart, 9-11-65. Tea Tree Galley, the Giant Killers, 11-10-76. An 11-point win to the Galleys. The player we're we'll watching while I'm ch chitty chatty blah blahing is number 22 from Tea Tree Galley, Brody Latham. Not the highest volume in possessions, 13 possessions, but he went at 92%. He had four marks, six tackles, and a goal. Um, watching, the, uh, watching what Jad and Indy had to say about him, though, he was really important structurally because he brought the forward line heat, the forward line pressure, and a lot of contest in that forward line to ensure Tea Tree Galley could maintain ground position. And when I get to the team stats, you'll see how valuable he was. Um, Let's have a look at the goal kickers. Uh, Shock shared it around a little bit. Um, Henry McAuliffe, Harvey Lambert, and Oscar Lovelock all kicked two. Whilst um, for Tea Tree Gully, they also had three players who kicked two in the Pistol Pete Personos, Ryan Spittle, and Tyson Breeden. Following on from what I said last game, I believe I believe Spittle received a card, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, there'll be more to follow on that. Um, but let's have a look now at the team stats. Much like Lenunga. Tea Tree Gully, 36 less disposals, but plus 11 inside 50s. They're taking the long ball, they're getting it in, and they're owning the territory. The other thing they did do, have a listen to the tackle count. 83 to 75, 158 tackles in a game of Div 1 football. Um, they might have been down eight, but to still lay 75 tackles showed their pressure was supreme. Um, what we'll do now is we'll take a look at the better players. We'll start with Shock. Um, again, a great battle. It's interesting to note as well on the internet, um, again, I'm not sure what they did to their clubs, but on the internet, both coaches have named their Ruckman as best player. So it just shows what a great battle it would have been. Um, Noble for shock, 23 hitouts, five tackles, um, and four spoils. A great effort. Um, they also named Ethan Moore. Uh, Charlie Hilljard was in there. Chessie Foster. Um, Lambert for his 10 touches at 90%, two goals. Um, but having a look in a deep dive at the stats... Some of the players that didn't get named, but obviously really had a good impact. Seb Kerridge with 23 touches, McDermott 24, and Clayton Simons, as always, doing a great job with 25 touches. For Tea Tree Galley, uh, Blake Penny, 16 touches, 35 hitouts, and eight clearances. You just about say that's just Blake Penny doing Blake Penny things. Um, he has been outstanding all year. Zach McKay is in there. Breeden, 13 touches, two goals. Josh Flynn made the best players. And they sneaked in a guy called Luke Brown. Now, when you look deeper into the Dartfish stats, I think Tony and I will talk about this in a later segment, you get a real good look at why you need to look at the Dartfish stats. Because Luke Brown had 31 disposals, he took seven marks, four tackles, um, and he kicked the match-winning goal in the 23rd minute of the last quarter. Um, he had a bunch of clearances as well. So for those of you playing along at home, in two finals so far, he's had 74 disposals and in excess of 20 clearances. I don't want to tell you how to stop Tea Tree Gully, but you might want to get someone to stand next to Luke Brown. Um, Alex McKay, the other one, in big games, McKay comes to the fore. 18 touches, 6 clearances, 5 frees and 5 tackles. He would have been in and out like a hot knife through butter. He, uh, he's a real leader, a real barometer for Tea Tree Gully, and you expect him to play well when they win. Um, final comments on the game. Um, Glenunga, runner-up in straight sets last year. Um, so runner-up in Div 2, and then coming forward into Div 1, finishing third straight sets. Exact same thing has happened to Sacred Heart. Sometimes it takes a year. I look at the Sacred Heart list and it was hard not to fall in love with them this year. There's six or seven guys who I coached at the Bays as juniors. You know, your Hilljards, McAuliffe's, Lambert's, um, all brilliant kids. They're teenagers. They are all teenagers. They're only going to get better. I think Sacred Heart are going to be around the mark for years to come. I wish them all the best. It'll be a tough pill to, for a bitter pill for them to swallow at the moment, but I expect to be back there when the whips are cracking next year. But... Full credit to Tea Tree Gully. Everyone keeps doubting him, and they just keep proving us wrong. Well done to Justin Mishotta and the team. You're doing great things. One more win, and you're in a grand final. So let's have a look at this game, the game this week. It is Prince Alfred College and Tea Tree Gully. It's at, I call it Richmond Oval, because that was what it was called when I was a kid, West Adelaide Football Club, but the sponsor's name is High Sense Arena. 
If you're looking for it, if you're a player, you should know where it is. It's on Milner Road. Okay, now, it's, it's a bigger ground, obviously. It actually resembles Pertaringa, which makes it interesting. Let's have a look when they played this year in round nine. It was when Tea Tree Gully were having their poo-poo patch, we'll call it. Um, Tea Tree Gully 2-6, PAC 17, 13, 115. It's a 97 point shellacking. It's the same as what happened against Sacred Heart, though, in round eight. There's a mirror image there. They had a really poor period where injury struck, probably some loss of form, um, and, you know, they just didn't play the conditions well. Um, Slee was best on ground for PAC. In the round 18 clash, it was a lot closer. It was PAC 15-15-105 with Brazil kicking five and Trangrove kicking three in a best on ground display, while Citra Gully kicked 8-8, eight, eight, uh, Luke Brown, their star. So the question is, can Tea Tree Gully do it? Well, yes, they can. They're playing great team football and their best will be good enough. I'm absolutely certain that the boffins of PAC will be studying the tape and having a look how they've done it. And I don't need to unpack the Tea Tree Gully riddle for you. I think with 1,058 games of AFL and sample experience on the biggest sample ground, which is nice and firm now, it's not going to be muddy, it's going to be a fast deck and a fast track. Um, I expect um, perhaps Hayden Jolly to be moved back to half-back or back into the midfield. Didn't work at half-forward last week. I expect Jaden Davis to come in and have an impact. I think PAC, the quality and class they've got, will get them over the line. I expect it to be a close game, but for me, PAC, Glenunga, grand final, which I'd hate to say I told you so, but in the November show, I told you so. Didn't I, Jimmy? I did. Jim... <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy does talk. That's brilliant, Jim. Okay, um, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, it is getting to the crunch time of the season. Thanks for joining me for the Division 1 Weekly Wrap. Hang round. I'm going to get a chance to speak to some PAC players tonight. Really looking forward to that. Stay tuned for more Between the Posts. Welcome back, folks. Well, it's been a uh, very big week in football and we've had some teams already, Tommy, have gone through into a grand final, but that also means promotion. Yes. So let's talk positive. It's all about the promotional stuff and uh, the relegation. People can go and look at the ladders themselves. But first of all, uh, teams through to the grand final, Glenunga, which yes. you know a little bit about, and the preliminary this week, uh, PAC versus Tea Tree Gully. This game, folks, is at High Sense Stadium, Richmond Oval, West Adelaide, and we're going to cover that a little bit later, a little bit more in depth yeah. uh, about those teams. I take a bit of a deep dive in, obviously, my Div 1 uh, review and preview on those teams as well. Plenty, I've talked plenty about that one. So our Division 2, uh, Breakthrough Mental Health, Golden Grove. Division 1, they're there. They've done it. As predicted on the Christmas footy show, my friend. I'll tell you what, the Nostradamus. Mm. Have they done it, Glenunga? Has mm. Glenunga now been the template? That won't be Golden Grove on the phone now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Have they, has, is Glenunga the template to follow now through the how to get through the grades? Maybe. If they win, it might be. <laughs> yeah, well, Golden <laughs> Grove, well. well done there. They're in Division 1. And uh, not the margin as well, it's, it's worth mentioning. Yeah. 90-something points. They're, they're in Div 1 with a bullet. There's one step to go there. And they came up last year from Div 3, winning sure the did. grand final. Yeah. Uh, so they they will play the winner of Foss and Paynham Norwood Union. We might have a buddy bet on this game a bit Fox. later on. Mm. What are you thinking along those lines, Foss and Paynham Norwood Union? Well, the Falcons are getting their one win away from getting back to where they belong. Foss came, and obviously they were a Div 1 club for many, many years. I reckon the Premiers, this is the old uh, Doogie Hauser brain here, I reckon in 2000 they were the Div 1 Premiers. Um, yep. So, yeah, they'd be very keen to get back in Division 1. They've been a powerhouse boss. So. All right. Division 3, Flinders Park. So they move up to Division 2. Yep. One of my old clubs in the Sapper days, that was. Um, well, Modbury have to play in a prelim now versus only Mercedes Jets. That's going to be a great game, that Yeah, one. remiss of me not to mention, Modbury on the weekend had A's, B's, C's and D's all playing to get into a grand final. D's, C's and B's all got there. A's just fell a goal short. If the A's can just... Channel a little bit of that Josh Ladder Gordy spirit. Ladders in the in the C grade. He's been outstanding this year. Single handedly has got them to a grand final. Oh, fair dinkum. Jump on my back, boys. This yeah. is how we go. Same good it. fella too. Oh, Division Nine news. Lockleys, well, been strong into Division Three. They play Lockleys football out there. That's their brand. Well, Paraka versus CBCOC. Uh, 
at Stradarama Oval at Glenelg. So a lot of these games are actually being played at Sample. Mm. So we do thank the Sample for the use of the grounds as well. What an exciting thing for a lot of these players. In the well, what a roads. wonderful company, <laughs> my employer. Um, <laughs> bit of an upset there, yeah. it's fair to say. Lockheed's going through. I mean, they've, they've, the previous years have been fantastic. Benny Harron leading the way up forward. Yep. Baraka with a glamour team all year. Uh, and mm. well done to Brett Simpson in his first year. Um, prelim final against Baraka. Anyone's, anyone's game, I think. Well, Division 5, uh, Wakefield Sports Clinic, and uh, we've had Vince go out uh, a fair bit to Jeps Cross and uh, Kilburn and so on. So Jeps Cross are through, and we've got Colonel Light Gardens versus Kilburn. It's a huge year for Kilburn if they can get through that granny and win it. But I'll tell you what, they've got to get over Colonel Light Gardens, and that's mm. down at Campbelltown Oval, beautiful oval down there, rocks. Oval, uh, any thoughts around yeah, that one, TJ? Je- Jeff's Cross, just they've been the form side all year and they mm. just went bang on the weekend. They really sorted out Colonel Light Gardens, much like my Brick Colonel Light uh, teams all through in the grades. Um, and the C grade didn't quite get the job done, the A grade didn't get the job done, and um, the Kilburn, I think, are just starting to find form. They'll be very hard to stop the, the chicks. All right, so Division 6, O'Neill's Sportswear, uh, Marion into Division 5. And might I just say, uh, a lot of the clubs that have got through, I'll come to this in a minute actually. First of all, Marion uh, into Division 5, Greenacres, who are doing very well uh, in Division 6, versus Salisbury at, well, ex convenience oval. It's going to be hot weather, reasonably warm, on one of the biggest ovals in the league out there at Elizabeth. She is a billiard table at the moment, she is looking good, but firm. It's going to be tough to get tackled on, uh, on well, the old Elizabeth Oval, ex convenient. Mm. Um, well done to Marion. Well done to Greenacres as well, coming up from Div 7. I talked yep. about it um, last year on our Christmas show. They decided they didn't want to be a Div 7, one cl- Div 7 club anymore. They're one win away from not being a Div 6 club. So best of luck to them. And Salisbury, um, under the new coach, has done a great job as well, just re establishing themselves. Brett Joseph, slip my mind for a sec, but what well on BJ. Well, it's such an exciting week. And then the last one, it is the Division 7 Grand Final. Uh, so Ingle Farm, another one of my old clubs, playing uh, Houghton at Price Memorial Oval at Mitcham. So this is going to be an absolute belter. Houghton have uh, come through. Power Hills have fallen by the wayside. They've had a great year, Power Hills. Thought they were going to really get there myself. And, uh, well, Houghton have come up and speaking with their coach today. And... Uh, we had a yap around it. You've only got to get into that five, and anything can happen from there and there. One win off being the Premiers there. But either yeah. way, both teams into Division 6 next year, Tommy. Yeah, they've done well. Um, obviously, Living Ingle Farm had a bit to do, or have a bit to do with their club. Um, helped get Kerry Payne there, which is, a, you know, yep. he's done an amazing job. A's, B's, and C's all doing well. The whole club has turned around. These two teams don't like each other. Um, it will be an absolute cracker of a game. I think being at Price, it helps Houghton, but Ingle Farm have been the best team all year. The last time they lost, I think, without checking any stats, because I didn't know this was coming, was round one against Houghton. Why does it help Houghton being at Price Memorial? It's a long it's, trip. It's small, yeah, but it's smaller. It's a, ah, it's a smaller okay. ground. Ingle yep, Farm, so they know how to Ingle play. Farm changed lanes. They, they've, uh, Kerry's got a really strong system there. Um, Houghton have got, have got some match winners in their team, and... Um, they will be a puncher's chance, pardon the pun. So, Tommy, uh, this is fantastic for the Adelaide Football League. As we said, a lot of the SNFL sample, SNFL we say. Sample, do, SNFL. Yeah, uh, grounds are being used. Exciting for all the players. You've got the Buddy Bet cap on, so I'm just going to go and get a little beer. We'll come a uh, little bit of gear, and maybe a beer, and we'll come back in a moment. I'm not sure you can have either of those things, Tony, but <laughs> uh, hey, keep on we'll, we'll come back in a moment. And uh, we'll have an interesting buddy bet. Stay tuned, folks. And welcome back to Between the Posts. It's that time of the evening again. It's time for the buddy bet. Bet responsibly. Gamble with mates. Don't give it to those bookies. Give it to your mates. Or win it off your mates even better. Tony... You've been a stinker this year. I reckon you're 0-7 against me. I've owned you, I've brained you, I've towed you up. I've done all sorts of things. But, um, well, I'm going to give you the opportunity to give the bet to me. All right, uh, Tommy, what are we betting on? <laughs> like, am I going to do it, am I? 
Well, you, you said, said all right. I've got to give it to you. Right, I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm give you a favour. I know what it'll be. I'm going to give you a favour. I'll give you a buddy bet on what I bet you're going to bet on. <laughs> Paint them Norwood Union, I'll bet you. Go on. Well, you don't spend 17 years somewhere and, and not love the place. Um, they're not going to be favourites. PAC, uh, Fos, I'm at PAC. Foss Camden took care of them quite well two weeks ago. Ooh. But Paynham know how to win big games. They've won Div 1 flags. They've won Div 2 flags. Oh. And I'm betting... Come on, Tony. With my heart. Oh. With my heart. The bet is who's going to Division 1. I say the Fox. Well, that means, folks, oh, I might finally be on a winner. I get Foss. Come on, you good thing. You get get the, on up. You get the Foss Phantoms and I get the oh. Fox. Buddy bet. All right. Bet with mates. Gamble responsibly. Good work, Tommy. We held the answer for too long. Or what? <laughs> no, it's bet right. <laughs> and welcome back to Between the Posts, of course, on location here at Park 9, it's Tommy Javor. I'm joined by Vice Captain of PAC, Tom Sumner. Welcome, mate. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. No worries. Now, the great thing about, I look at your list and uh, so many ex-students. You are, of course, an ex-student, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So who else, who else is from your era in the team? So yeah. you've got Luke McCauley out there, who's just joined us this year. Yep. Um, We've had a few boys come in and out of the A's, but there's uh, quite a few of us from my year. I think there's about five or six playing still yep. amongst the grades, which is great. So I was lucky enough to uh, teach at your school in 2012, 13, 14, and I got to know a few of the fantastic reptiles like a Will Swales and Frosty <laughs> Davidson, absolute legends, Harry Collison. Um, but it's an exciting time for your club. I'm just I'm, I'm going to read off it so I get it right. C's are in a grand final yep. in C1. This weekend, triple header for you boys. So A's and B's, Div 1, Div 1 reserves. Um, and your C7's all playing at Richmond. And then your C8's at St Mary's. Um, obviously, the club's just tracking along quite nicely. Yeah, it's going really well. I think we've uh, been building over the last few years, which is always great to see. We uh, have a great bunch of boys come through each year from the school, which is really important. The club puts a lot of effort into making sure that we really foster a community and a culture here that's attractive to everyone to come join us play. Yep. Now, Jim took me for a bit of a tour tonight. Absolutely, obviously, we, we're here for the grand opening of the changes. Outstanding facilities must be great now. And even the, the oval looks like a billion top, so it must be great to have these facilities. Yeah, we, we're super fortunate. You know, um, Holly and Jim put a lot of effort into making this happen, and we are very lucky. I think we had a nice upgrade from what we had previously. Yep. Let's get down to business though, mate. I'm here because uh, you are one of the stars, PAC, there's no doubt about it. Um, I talked about it on comments, I'm not sure if you watched the game afterwards, but how exciting it is to watch a battle with someone like you and Mike Wonky, a game within a game. What's it like standing at two-time Ken Farmer? You've, you've had him the last two times. Yeah. What's that been like? Yeah, no, nah, it's good. Uh, yeah. I like being tested. He's a good forward. There's a great team. They move the ball quick, so it's, uh, you know, getting into some sticky situations, but... It's always good getting up against some of the real big forwards. Yep. And he kicked a couple early on the weekend, but then didn't kick it anymore. So I thought you, you did a really good job. Um, take us through the game. Obviously, an eight-point loss. Just any comments on the game? Yeah, it was a, a tough game, and we knew it was going to be a tough game. Um, they play their deck really well, and they uh, are very clean around the contest. Uh, we did let them get in front a little bit there early. We came back in the third, but I think we had done ourselves a mischief there a bit early and didn't quite give us enough time to get back. I, I used done myself a mischief all the time, it's very good. You do watch the show. Um, mate, let's get on to this week's game though. Um, I, I, I think um, High Sense Arena, uh, West LA, will, will help your on-ballers and mm. the conditions might just support your team a little bit. Although Peter Inger is a big oval. Um, a huge game this week against Tea Tree Gully. Yeah, yeah, massive. They are Tea Tree Gully, a high pressure team, so they're going to bring it to the contest, which is... As long as we can match them there, I think we should be okay, but it's always good to go against a good opposition. No worries, so uh, I work in footy. One question the kids ask all the time, every time I have a CBA, who's your best friend at PAC? Uh, oh, mate, a, <laughs> I did this to Tom Humphries on air. You stitched me up massively here. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should say. No, you got to say it. you got to. Uh, look, we've got a, a great bunch of mates here, but you know, particularly close ones are my good friend Brody Henderson that uh, plays in the Bs. Yeah. Fantastic. Not all about the A grade. Hey, mate, look, best of luck on the weekend. Thanks for having us at your great club. Um, Obviously, you're doing great things and hope you get the chocolates. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cheers, mate. Awesome. Thanks for watching us. We'll be back with more Between the Posts. Welcome back. Dartfish are fantastic supporters of the Adelaide Football League and a lot of the teams that are playing in the grand finals and the preliminary finals this week have got their 
through using the dartfish, whether it be footage or stats and the analysis. There's also a team in the Adelaide Hills that are uh, already through to the grand final uh, who also have been using it and many others around Australia. So what are the dartfish stats and, and how does it work and so on? Well, there's teams already booked and they're starting to purchase packages for next season. September and October are really big months for non-finals clubs. We look at player analysis, exit interviews, feedback, stats, footage, and so much more. Stats and graphs. Graphs, mate. Graphs, you're in, you're in SA, mate. Graphs, we don't sit in castles. Do you okay. say potato or potato? Tomato or tomato? <laughs> anyway, Brilliant. it's fantastic. Let's uh, get down to some serious stuff, mate. You've analysed the Glenunga and PAC game, and there's some really great stuff that you've got out of these statistics. Yeah, so I mean, I analyse it to within an inch of its life every Sunday morning. I'm lucky enough to, to have the system and uh, probably makes me, I call myself a Div 1 expert because all I'm doing is getting the, the data and analysis off of the Dartfish uh, system and it tells me everything. So, you know, you, you analyse a team like Lenunga and you go, hang on, how are they a game and a half clear on top through to a grand final? Yet they have less possessions than the other team. Yeah. So you yep. can tell they take the ground, they're, they're a long ball using team, and they always have inside 50s. They tend to also win clearances, which allows them to control the position on the ground where the ball is. All right, what have you got for us? Anything yeah. on the stats? Uh, well, I, I did, I revealed all the stats from this week in the Division 1 weekly wrap, but as an yes. example, um, this week, Glenunga, 20 less disposals, 12 more inside 50s, 16 less marks. They don't chip around, they don't, they'll only take the, the small forward kick when it's a tick lead or a lead up kick mm. they don't take a dangerous inside kick unless it's a designated kicker it's absolutely on so you can actually protect the corridor and waste coverage there so structure now you get all of this if you've got this system you'll well, be able to read into it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's right. all there for you so i'm not giving away any secrets yeah. i think we all know that that uh, pac like to possess the ball they like to get it in the hands of say a hayden jolly who's the set kicker and he will like take the lane kick or bridging kick or whatever now what they were able to do on the weekend, having watched the game myself, is you could see Jolly didn't get the possession volume. He played off half forward on the tight confines of where he wasn't able to turn and get position and see what was in front of him and become a dangerous weapon. Fantastic, TJ. And that's the thing. If you're a coach of any credibility, you'd, you'd go in and you'd look that up and you'd highlight him and you'd, you might be able to see his game from Saturday and then you can see the other games throughout the year as well. You get total analysis. So I'm going to cover Sacred Heart and Teacher going well. Have a little bit of a different look at this one because I've spoken to a couple of people that were at the game along with the broadcasters. It was close all day and after half time, Tea Tree Gully kicked 5 5 to 3 goals 7. So both teams had uh, 10 shots each. Better players Blake Penny, Zach McKay, and Luke Brown. I'm going to cover some of them in the statistics. If we go now to the overall match and we look through, there's a lot of things in there that are very similar, but the turnovers is the one that got me. So the forced turnovers. 53 to Tea Tree Gully and 47. So there were six more, but the unforced. So that means you're in clear, clear space, you've got a mark or a free kick, or you're in general play, you've got time and space, and you're going to use the ball and you've burnt it for some reason. I'll cover that they, in a they, moment. They kill you because normally your teammates are trusting that unforced, exactly right. you're going to be able to put the ball into the area of the ground that we're all expecting it to go. And when it doesn't go there, that's when teams get caught out and there's those transition scores. 17 players have set up for that ball to go to that position. And you and I both know as a coach, when that ball misses by 10 metres, everyone's a fish out of water. Then there's a turnover. It's like running uphill. And about a 1,000 spectators as well. Yes. <laughs> and the other one uh, to look at is the hitouts because the clearances were equal, but the hitouts, of course, Blake Penny, 42 hit yeah. outs to advantage. So the set actions in play we come across and we see little things like the smothers were five to two, the inside 50s tea tree gullies way 46 to 35. A lot of coaches talk about this, get the ball inside 50, get it inside 50. Well, that's great, but it's so good getting an inside 50 if it comes out just as quickly, you've got to get it inside and finish off. I know it sounds uh, pretty easy, but get it in and get a result with the goal. So, as you see, that's how they won the game. They got it in and they won. So, more inside 50s. They're yeah, gone. Yeah, no, I was going to say, it's interesting that um, our, our co-commentators, they weren't with us, but Jad Gosson and Indy Rogers actually awarded Brody Latham best player because of that. His yep. six tackles in the forward line and his efficiency when he was able to create a turnover, and he did create those turnovers, they put a real value on that and controlling, and that's where they get the additional inside 50s and repeat stoppages from. So we look at three areas now. When we go to the individual players page, 
we see the possessions. Well, Luke Brown, as you alluded to, 29 possessions, running at 94%. That is a uh, fairly cracking effort. But he also took uh, seven marks. So when we look at uh, our mark getters... I had 31. I think that's total there, isn't it? 31? 31, sorry. You are correct. Uh, I'm looking at effective disposal. So it's not too bad, is 31. it? <laughs> so, yeah, I'll tell you what. So the marks, Zach Mackay. So you'll notice Zach Mackay was... McKay. Uh, McKay, yeah, was second best. Uh, but he's come in with seven marks. Uh, the other one is Tyler Martin. He had seven and six to Blake Penny. So some high mark scorers. I then broke it down into tackles. Cody Tape, you come across, he's had six tackles. Uh, Chad Shawmaker's seven. I reckon he plays midfield he as does. well. Nice uh, and the player you mentioned, was it Brodie Latham? Yep. So he's had six tackles. Yep. So there's some high ones there. And Asprey had four as well. Spoils. Well, the big Ruckman, Blake Penny, he can do everything. He had five spoils. And I'll go down to Jordan Personos, who wasn't really high in the total disposal. He has seven, but he has eight spoils out of a total of 35. So you look at team efforts and acts, and these are the things that Playing you can pick role. up as. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I spoke about the unforced turnovers. The graph, 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 will show you this when you go to this page. You can see there, third quarter, and also the total of unforced turnovers. We get to the possessions, so two of the top eight possession getters on the ground were from Tea Tree Gully. So six were from Sacred Heart. It's not getting the possession, TJ, it's what you do with them. So a little one there, I really love analysing it to, to the nth degree. We go over and all I did here was looked at the top tackle getters on the ground. 12 of the top 20 came from Tea Tree Gully in tackles alone. So the key, I think, with uh, Tea Tree Gully, two things. First of all, their goal scorers. They have a spread of goal scorers. You can't just uh, go and try and stop one. They had eight different goal scorers on the day, number one. The second one is their pressure. So there's physical pressure, there's mental pressure, there's verbal pressure, and there's visual pressure. So that means you've got the ball here, you look up the ground, all of a sudden everyone's covered, you bomb the ball in the air because you've got no one to go to. So there's four or five different areas of pressure. Then internally, you look at the scoreboard, you've got your own pressure, and then there's performance. So how am I performing on the day? What was my feedback? What were the goals I set at the start of the day? So a lot of things around the dark fish stats that we can get into. It all August for a great game. We wish both teams all the best. Get hold of Dartfish, there is so much more that we can be doing for you around the stats and also the footage. Thank you. Uh, welcome back to Between the Posts. Again, undeniable access, it's amazing what PAC are giving me. Right now, they're giving me one of my favourites. Welcome to the show, Josh Perks. Thanks for having me. It is great to have you, mate. Now, I'll get a moment. You had a perm and I was calling you the permulator. And then you shaved it and I started calling you the percolator. Have any of these nicknames stuck? Uh, yeah, the permulator stuck uh, <laughs> while it was there, but there was only a few boys who had uh, watched the game, so <laughs> I tried to keep it secret, but um, yeah. yeah, then it went, so. Um, what happened? Why? The big, the big, the big mop. Yeah, Why'd you, know, you get rid of it? The hot weather. The hot oh, weather. Yeah, it's it gets, coming on. Hot. It's a bit sweaty. Yeah. No, beautifully done. Hey, mate. Um, obviously, didn't get the result you're after on the weekend, but a, probably a really good game of footy. Just your thoughts on the game? Um, yeah, I think. I mean, if you can remember back to a couple of weeks ago when we played them in the minor round, it was. I think everyone sort of agreed it was definitely an improvement. Like yep. our attack on the footy, some of the things we want to work on, like you know. Uh, front of front of contest stoppages, front of the um, ground balls and stuff. Uh, we did better, but obviously we didn't get the result. Um, not, I don't know, you know, the areas to improve on. I mean, they obviously played oval very, very well. Yeah. Um, and it's a very different style to how we play. Yep. So trying to adjust to that is, you know, difficult. But we think we did adjust better than the last time. Yep. Uh, but obviously not well enough. And they got a few really good players that yep. play the right style. So. Yeah. I, I have a theory that league grounds will suit you, um, so we'll see how that pans out this week against Richmond and then potentially at the parade for the grand final. Uh, just one thing I want to do is just the connection. I can tell there's a great connection here. You've got the four teams in finals. Also an old scholar, are you? Yeah. Yeah, so fantastic. Graduated in 2019, yeah. so still very young as well. Must be great to be able to come play footy with your mates post-school. 
yeah, no, it is. It's it's very enjoyable. I mean, like I think talking to people at school and stuff, like the coaches, they they always said that school footy is probably the most fun you'll ever have. Um, and I, I do tend to agree with that when you're playing with people you spend, you know, every hour of every day. Yep. Um, but then coming out here is probably, I have to say, the next best thing, especially once, you know, your mates, like first year, not everyone came out for my year, but then the next few years, um, it's definitely been very enjoyable with, you know, my schoolmates from when I was very young. Now, I've seen your pinch hit and ruck this uh, week. Is there any chance you might be coming up against Big Blake Tickets Penny? Uh, I've got no idea what's going to happen. Um, I definitely cards say close to the chest. Yes. <laughs> I'd say it's a possibility. Um, yeah, I, w- I never counted it out, but it's happened a few times this year where I've had to sub in a bit. So I would definitely say it's a uh, possibility. No worries. Now, wouldn't be an interview without a stitch up, mate. I asked the same question to Tommy Sumner. It's the question all the kids ask the AFL players. Who's your best friend at PAC? My best friend at PAC, old girls. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Tough question, oh, isn't it? That is a tough one. Um, Don't say Craig Pitt. Don't no. <laughs> Get me out of the ruck. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, probably Chris Short. He's been a mate for a long time. So, um, yeah, good player. Beautiful. Great mate. mate, it's Tuesday night. It's a beautiful warm evening. I'm pretty sure you want to get out to training. Thanks for joining us on Between the Post. Welcome back. It's time for a, well, very exciting time. I always love this part on the show. I love all parts of the show, but the goals and the marks of the week. Who yeah. are the winners, Tommy? Well, uh, goal of the week. Did I ever tell you I won goal of the week in Auskick? It's not about yeah. you, but I, know. <laughs> I knocked off all those five-year-olds, Tommy Javor Pocket, <laughs> through the goals. But let's get serious here. Well, that's the because... end of the show, folks. Uh, <laughs> Our we got go- footage of that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, probably. probably. <laughs> uh, our goal of the week winner was Lucas Sanders from Hectorville Football Club, and he is the winner of an ORTC $50 voucher. So congratulations to Lucas. And the mark winner? The mark of the week. Well, uh, Did you get that one too? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I never left the ground, mate. I only left the ground in the aeroplane. Um, look, they didn't have a great week, but they've had a win here. It's Sam Lowby from Sacred Heart. In Division 1, he receives the Bianco $100 voucher. Well done, Sam. Righto, folks. Here are the selections for this week. Remember, the top three are on the Adelaide Footy League Facebook page. To vote, simply head over to the page and cast your vote using the relevant emoji.
Well, good day, footy fans, and thanks to O'Neill Sportswear. Welcome to the weekend wrap. A look at all the men's A grade results and upcoming finals across the Adelaide Footy League from a huge day, Saturday, September the 9th. We have a grand final matchup in the C Max Clinical Research Division 7. Here's your ladder at the end of the minor round, Eagle Farm, the minor premiers from Power Hills and Houghton Districts. The finals so far. A couple of weeks back, OSB Lonsdale knocked out Flinders Uni, 50 points in elimination. Bit of an upset, Houghton Districts beat Parry Hills by 14 points. Last week, in the first semi, Parry Hills recovered, beat OSB Lonsdale, knocked them out by 49 points. And Ingle Farm became the first team promoted uh, in the men's competition, beating Houghton Districts, getting the first grand final berth by 86 points. Yesterday, Houghton hosted Parry Hills, and won by 15 points. Six goals to one in the opening quarter set up the lead. Eagle Farm came back a little bit uh, in the third quarter. In fact, only trailed by one goal coming into the final quarter. In fact, correct that. They managed to tie the score at three-quarter time. Berth in the grand final, Berth in Division 6 at stake. House and Steady kicked two goals, four to one behind in the final quarter to get that grand final berth. And just as a side note, check out the prelim final score, 86 to 71, compared with their meeting two weeks back, 86 to 72. Very different games, very, very similar score and margin. So the Team Max Clinical Research Division 7 has its grand final. It's next week, check Play HQ for venue details. It'll be Ingle Farm, the Bulldogs, against Houghton Districts of the Raiders. That game will also be live streamed thanks to filming footy. That's the CMAX Clinical Research heading for its Premiership Decider next week. On to the O'Neill Sportswear Division 6 where it will semi-final day as it is for the rest of the divisions that we're going to have a look at. Marion, the minor premiers from Greenacre, Salisbury, Fitzroy, Central United. Well, last week, Fitzroy dispatched Central United by 28 points. Greenacre is pretty comfortable over Salisbury by 42. Yesterday, Salisbury stayed alive, got to the top three, beating Fitzroy by 56 points, even first quarter. The big quarter to watch was the third. Salisbury kicked nine goals to the Lions, two. It was an easy Salisbury win from there. Second semi final was a classic encounter down at Marion. Uh, anyone who thought the Rams would have it easy wasn't the case. Um, Indeed, at three-quarter time, it was five points the lead to the home side. Sorry, seven points the lead for the home side. And they eventually picked three goals uh, to just uh, win by the one solitary point, uh, kicking three goals for uh, it was enough to get the, the, the chocolate. So married off to the grand final, Green Acres. Well, they get Salisbury next week. Venue to be advised uh, for the right to go in Division 5. Marion get the, the grand final berth and the promotion. And they're already in the grand final on Saturday, September 23rd. Details to be advised. That's the O'Neill Sportswear Division 6. On to the Wayfield Sports Clinic Division 5. We saw Jeps Cross make their first finals appearance. Kilburn, Colonel Light and Trinity, the other three sides still in it. That was after Trinity knocked out West Croydon last week and Kilburn um, uh, lost to Colonel Light Gardens by 27 points in an upset. Well, first semi final, Kilburn, a bit angry about losing the qualifying, took it out on Trinity. Six goals to two in the first quarter, six goals to nil in the second, five goals to three in the third, six goals to four in the fourth. 93 point win to the Czechs. They advanced to the prelim final and they'll get another shot at Colonel Light Gardens, who Really had no answer to Jeps Cross yesterday, who opened up with a seven-goal first quarter and led comfortably throughout. Uh, put it out of reach in the third quarter, kicking four goals, one to six behinds. Kind of like having their chances, but not able to really do much on the scoreboard. Only two scoring shots the difference, but the Rams into the grand final, into Division 4 with a 57-point win. Colonel like Adams and Kilburn, uh, they'll be in the prelim final next week for the right to join Jeps Cross in the grand final and Div 4 next year. That's the Wakefield Sports Clinic Division 5. Nine years Division 4, we saw Paraka for the first time yesterday. 
Uh, Lockley's and CBC were the top three, and Plimpton beat Hectorville. Uh, that was in the elimination final uh, last week. Lockley's beating CBC. So the first semi-final, CBC and Plimpton. Uh, the Bulldogs will rule some inaccurate kicking, four more scoring shots. Uh, one point game at three quarter time for CBC. In fact, interesting. Have a look at the three quarter time score. CBC and Plimpton. Eleven goals kicked in the first three quarters of the contest. Boy, oh boy, did things open up after that. CBC kicking six goals in the final quarter. Plimpton kicking five. Um, in the end, it was the Dolphins by six points to stay alive. Second semi-final, uh, Lockleys. Now winners at uh, quarter time by 10 points. Extended that to 20 at the halftime break. Uh, then a further 29-point lead heading for home. They pretty much cruised from there to a 34-point win over the minor premiers, Paraka. So Lockleys bypassed them. The Demons are into Division 4. Paraka and CVC Old Collegians. That's your matchup in next week's preliminary final. To join them, grand final, September 23, Lockleys to take on that winner. That's the nine years of Division 4. Congrats to the Demons on their promotion to Division 3. Looking at Division 3, uh, Modbury, the minor premiers, made their appearance in the finals. Only Mercedes and Flinders Park, along with Hope Valley, uh, the three remaining sides. That was after Hope Valley uh, dispatched Pembroke by 19 points in the elimination. Flinders Park uh, defeated Under Mercedes by 33. Well, the Jets rebounded. 40-point winners over Hope Valley. Four goals to nil in the first quarter, setting up the win. There would be no 11-goal final quarter this week for Hope Valley after that incredible uh, result the week prior. The Jets fly off to the prelim. Hope Valley's season is done. And they'll play Modbury next week after Flinders Park bypassed the minor premiers and got the first uh, berth in Division 2 and in the grand final in a fortnight's time. Uh, Flinders Park, well, it, they trailed by a point at three-quarter time. They kicked three goals to two in the final quarter to emerge victorious by one straight shot. So Flinders Park to the grand final next week. Modbury and Undy Mercedes for a berth in that Division 3 grand final and a spot in Division 2 next year. And then I'll take on Flinders Park September the 23rd. That's Division 3. Breakthrough Mental Health Foundation Division 2. Here's the ladder at the end of the minor round. Golden Grove make their appearance uh, yesterday. Peyton Miller, Jimmy and Foss Camden played the qualifying. Ross Trevor knocked out Athelstan. That was uh, by 35 points in the elimination final. Foss, a narrow 15-point win over Paynham. That was at uh, Paynham Oval. Uh, another narrow final. This time, Paynham got up at home, holding off a fast-charging Ross Trevor, who kicked two goals to nil in the final quarter, but they needed one more. Rox's season is done, losing two points, but the Falcons survive one more week. They'll play Foss Camden, who went up to Harpers Field and got the belting of the final series so far, at least in the A grade, going down by 95 points. Uh, Golden Grove from Godawo, uh, 21 point leaders at quarter time, extended that to 34, and then went six goals to one in the third quarter and seven goals to two in the final. 95 points, obviously, percentage, not a thing. Pretty good way for the Kookaburras to celebrate their uh, arrival, departure, call it what you want. They're going to Division 1 for the first time ever next season. Plus Camden, got a week to recover. They uh, will play Paynham. And next week, venue to be announced. That will be for the right to play Div 1 next year and get Golden Grove in the Breakthrough Mental Health Foundation Division 2 Grand Final on September the 23rd. That leaves Division 1. Lanunga, the minor premiers, made their appearance. Prince Alfred, Sacred Heart, the top three. Port District, where they were eliminated. And Teach for Gully. Remember, they made the finals with an 8 and 10 record. Just remember that for just a sec. Uh, elimination final, Teach for Gully at large beat Port District by 15. Prince Alfred, a ding dong battle, really good final this one, beating Sacred Heart by 11 points. That led to the semi finals yesterday and a, a, a narrow game all day. Uh, Teach for Gully by two points, by one point, and by seven points at the final change. After half time, they never let Sacred Heart lead uh, to emerge victorious on the road by 11 points. Uh, a great win for Teach for Gully. The only team from an elimination final 
to make it to the prelims in the A-grade men's across the board. Uh, in the second semi-final, uh, this one was Glenaga early, especially in the third quarter when they kicked three goals to one. Prince Alfred came back and tied it. Um, Glenaga led by a goal at the final break. And then in a pretty dour affair, just one goal each in that final quarter, kept that buffer to win by eight points. So the Rams are going under, off to, I think, their first A-grade Div 1 grand final since 1978. They'll be playing for their first ever Division 1 flag. Prince Alfred, well, they get a second chance against a team that they really wouldn't be expected to be playing. And that is Teach for Gully. You've got their win-loss record now up to 10 and 10 after two straight finals appearances. Uh, Prince Alfred won both games against the Gullies pretty easy, but this is finals and the Gullies are on a roll. That will be a fascinating preliminary final. The winner of that gets Glen Unger at Norwood Oval on Saturday, September the 23rd to be the best of the best in the men's in the Adelaide Footy League. So a quick review of relegation promotion. I mentioned this a couple of weeks. Here's your relegation sides decided at the end of the minor round. But we've now got seven teams that have booked in promotion. So here's your promotion club. Eagle Farm and House are going from Div 7 to Div 6. Good day to be a Ram. Uh, Marion going from 6 to 5. Jeps Cross going from 5 to 4. Lockley's from 4 to 3. Flinders Park in the Division 2. And Golden Grove playing Division 1 next season. Still five promotional spots to be determined through the preliminary finals uh, coming up. Which leaves me just Phil's team of the week. Well, you can name all seven of those for getting promoted. That's a great effort. But if I had to name one team of the week, I really couldn't look past a team that, well, I'm going to be honest, we got it wrong. All the experts, we have no idea. We got it wrong because Tea Tree Gully, the only A-grade elimination final team that made it to next week's preliminary final. We all thought the top four and the rest making up the numbers, and even if Port Districts were failing, the top three impenetrable, well, Teacher Gully have found a way. Last week, they upset Port District in the semi-finals. They beat Sacred Heart both away from home. That's deserving of Phil's team of the week. I'm sure Teacher Gully will be happy with that, but they've got bigger things on their agenda. Prince Alfred Old Collegians for a grand final berth next week. Okay, that's a wrap on the weekend. One of the biggest weekends of the Adelaide Footy League season. We've got one grand final set. We've got six other teams in the grand final waiting on their opponent. We've got seven teams promoted. A lot next week, and then it's a super grand final day on the 23rd. Thanks to O'Neill Sportswear for their support. Thank you for watching. We'll be back with the pretty moody final wraps this time next week. Until then, I'm Phil Hurden saying, enjoy your film. Well, folks, we're close to the end of the show, but the final word this week, uh, we just want to send a huge shout-out to a, a very good friend of ours. He's been a panellist and he's coached most clubs in the Adelaide Footy League, but Sean Jackson returned to coaching this year. He went down to Kingston and he's done a mighty job in the KNT FL it is. And, uh, well, they got to extra time on the weekend. They won the game. They're playing in the grand final this week against Border Districts at Narra Court. They won the preliminary by one point. And I'll tell you what, if they win, very close to one of the shows on uh, subscription TV, but he will be the mayor of Kingston if they get up. So uh, congratulations so far, Sean. We wish you all the best from everyone here. And uh, keep an eye out, folks. It could be anything happening on the weekend. And welcome back to Between the Posts from right here at Prince Alfred Football Club Park 9. Tony, it has been an absolute pleasure for you, and uh, I haven't minded it either. <laughs> Mate, of course, there's a couple of uh, people we need to thank. Firstly, our great sponsors. We don't exist without our great sponsors. There's so many of them. And, of course, the guests. I had the Percolator on. I had Tommy Sumner. Uh, we did the Div 1 route. We had all sorts. All right, and uh, as everyone knows, you can find us. We are all over social media. There's lots of videos. There's the goals and the marks. There's different interviews. I'll be interviewing the two Division 7 coaches uh, in the next couple of days, leading into the grand final of well, as well. And we thank you, most importantly, the viewers, for viewing. You've been watching Between the Posts.